Hey guys, Saw Simon here and thanks for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to talk about Friday the 13th the game and 10 things you may or may not know about the game. Some of the things I will be talking about will be trivia, references, game mechanics, and possibly a couple of easter eggs I found that you may not know about yet. If you enjoy the video, do the button thing, subscribe, and leave a comment if you think there was something I missed. I hope you guys enjoy the video and learn something new. Here we go. Simple enough here you already know you can break windows with Jason and that those broken windows will do damage to people that pass through them which helps you because the more damage they take without a first aid spray will cause them to run slower allowing you to catch up. But you can also break windows with Jason's throwing knives. Just aim and toss to see if you can scare anyone upstairs on the second floor. This is fun to do since they are just lying around the map anyway and they allow you to check for those sneaky players like me that like to lure Jason upstairs and then jump out of the window. By breaking these windows beforehand, the player will take more damage when they jump, possibly sustaining too much damage when they fall and dying in the process. Jason's mantra is also a useful indicator for the match, because every time you hear that sound, it means that he has gained another one of his abilities. He will make that sound every time he gains sense, shift, and stalk until he reaches rage mode. Just make sure you keep count early in the match so you know what abilities to keep an eye out for if you happen upon him early on in the match. I say this because early on in the match, it benefits you to run to cabins before he gains his sense and shift abilities, gaining as many items as you can before he becomes more powerful. These are your best bet melee weapons in the game, because of the high stun chance of each along with their durability and usefulness. The baseball bat has a 100% stun chance, so putting it in the hands of someone like Brad Wilson makes it a very dangerous tool. Same thing goes for the machete. Having characters like Tommy or Brad wield the machete makes it a lot easier to knock off Jason's mask. The wrench is just another durable weapon with a high stun chance. Because of these reasons, these are the best melee weapons in the game to use to attack Jason. But it also benefits to use them with a character with a high strength, because the lower it is, the less likely you are to stun him. In case you are wondering at what level you need to stop worrying about experience, for me it was 31 because that's when you unlock the last Jason, but overall for a level max it's 101. That's right, 101 levels of experience is what it's going to take for you to reach max level and unlock all of the sweet threads for all the counselors in the game. We have only one double XP weekend so far, but it's safe to say more will be on the way soon, especially with the game selling 1.8 million copies and having a physical release this upcoming October 13th. Why is it 7 against 1? Why not 6? Or 5? Or 10 or 12? Server issues? Lazy game developers? No, not at all. Well maybe, who knows. But this is what I believe. The choice of 7 counselors is because of the original movie when Pamela Voorhees killed 7 counselors in her massacre. We can see this represented in the newspaper article a young Tommy Jarvis sees in the fourth movie when he very rudely just goes into Rob Deere's shitty camping backpack looking for Playgirl Max. Instead, he finds Rob's newspaper clippings about all of Jason and his mom's achievement scores. You can buy as many of these shitty perks as you like. Just be sure you look over what perks you get before you sell them, even the ones you already have epics or lesser tier ones of. Because sometimes you will get a better version of that perk that might not give you as many penalties or any penalties at all. It's good to go through them after you have purchased them all because it will ensure that you don't delete something that could be a lot more useful to you without the penalty attached to it, even if you take a couple percentage points off the overall total. If you visit the cemetery, there is only one headstone there and it is extremely nice and larger than all the others and that is Jason's mommy, Pamela Voorhees. A nice callback to the films and to Betsy Palmer's character, even keeping her death on the headstone from the film. What I am curious about is who paid for this headstone and who the hell is keeping it so much nicer than all the others. This woman killed seven people and her son was dead. If you read the comics, his dad was pretty much a turd too. So who the hell bought this woman a headstone? That shit is not cheap. Sometimes you need to drop your shotgun for a second to pick up something to complete a task. Or maybe you just want to give something to someone or switch things around. Either way it can be confusing. Because not everybody knows how to drop their weapon or a large item. Simply hold down on the direction pad. Do not just press down as if you were trying to drop a small item like a med spray or the fuse. By doing this you can drop a gun or weapon from your main hand. Maybe even the car battery or gas so you can give it to somebody with a better repair skill. It helps to do so because if you make a mistake with somebody with that shitty repair skill, Jason if played by somebody decent will show up and demand tacos, and if you don't have those tacos he is going to lose his shit. This tribute road to Betsy Palmer is just like the headstone in the cemetery. You can spot it on Pakanak map in the middle and can also see a sign made out of wood along the main road path. This along with Hodder's Path and Shelley's Pass is just another pass landmark on the map named after one of the film's most iconic actors in the film's history. Each pass or path named after one of these people has something important to do with Jason. Betsy being the mom, Shelley giving Jason the mask, and Hodder playing the big man himself. 
Sometimes you get lucky and can escape in the boat. Other times, not so much because Jason is like a torpedo in the water. If he does manage to toss the boat and kill whoever happens to be in it, those on shore need to be aware of this for one simple reason. If those characters had any items on them when they died, such as first aid spray, keys, pocket knives, or anything in the quick select item category, then these items will wash up on shore and you can pick them up. Useful knowledge to have because late in the match when all of the cabins have been looted, it sucks not having anything to use against Jason to escape. It also sucks when that giant douche or turd sand which escapes with the keys or fuse and you are left with your chad in your hand. Well guys, again, that is all I have for you this time. If you enjoyed the video, please check out my other Friday the 13th videos and let me know what you think. I'll see all you guys next time. Thanks for watching.